What a pot this is. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. What? Oh, what a match. What about devastation? I've never seen anything like that. We'll be talking about this dramatic hand for the next 50 years. area, a few will walk away with a good story, but everybody gets a shot at cash here at Bay 101's Shooting Star on the World Poker Tour. The World Poker Tour is a series of international tournaments featuring high-stakes games, world-class players, and the biggest prize pools on the planet. Tonight, in Northern California, the sky's the limit as pros and amateurs alike aim to bring down the brightest lights in poker at Bay 101's Shooting Star. Yeah, baby! <laughs> at the start of this event, a capacity crowd of 243 dropped $5,000 each for the chance to set their sights on a million-dollar prize pool and a $5,000 bounty placed on the heads of 23 stars of the poker world. Like a god of poker. After a two-day shootout, the battle's just begun. As these final sharpshooters fight for the title and an elusive $25,000 seat in the WPT Championship, a season-ending showdown worth millions. Six players, over a million in cash, and with one bounty remaining, everyone's gunning for glory here on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the World Poker Tour. We are at the Bay 101 Casino in the heart of California's Bay Area. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. And, Mike, this is the eighth annual Shooting Star Poker event at the Bay of 101. And you know what? This is really turning out to be one of the most interesting and fun events on the World Poker Tour. Oh, you're right about that, Vince. It's where poker stars have bounties on their heads, and the other players are rewarded for busting them. That is true. And the bust-outs have been many this week. Poker stars getting shot down all over the place. It's embarrassing. But we do have one poker star left at the final table. That's Chris Moneymaker, and anyone who knocks out a shooting star will get 5000 in cash. It is quite a concept. So here we go. Six players gunning for a first prize of $360,000. Seat number two, our short stack today, is Susie Kim. She's a Bay Area local. This is her first poker tournament, and today Susie has 172000 worth of chips. Turning out in fifth chip position today is Mark Mache. Mark is from British Columbia, Canada. He is a 35-year-old financial analyst. Mark will be starting out today with 175,000 in chips. In fourth chip position, man originally from Montreal, now living in San Jose, Costa Rica, is 33-year-old Scott Wilson. Used to work as a stockbroker, now works for an internet company, and Scott has 203,000. Starting out in third chip position is 28-year-old champion poker player Chris Moneymaker. Chris is from Nashville, Tennessee, and Vince, there's a bounty on his head. Chris will be starting out today with 215,000 in chips. Okay, over to seat number three in second chip position is Masood Shojay, originally from Iran, but now he's living in the Bay Area. He's a computer programmer, and Masood has $416,000 worth of chips. Starting out as our chip leader with over 50% of the chips is 33-year-old Phil Gordon. This is Phil's second appearance on the World Poker Tour. Remember last time he got beat by the amateur from Finland. He's out to redeem himself today and capture his first WPT title with over $1.2 million worth of chips. He's the favorite to do so. But the dealer is scrambling the deck. We're about to get started. Let's go down to the felt. The antis today will be $1,000 each and the blinds will be five and 10,000. All players started out this tournament with $10,000 worth of chips. We have one shooting star left at the table. That is Chris Moneymaker. And it is on Chris right now to act. And he has just thrown away a jack and a five. Susie quickly folds. And now it's on Masood, who's got a king nine. He's starting out as our second chip leader here. But he's going to raise this. Well, aggressive play by Masood here. Raised with a king nine off suit. Mark Mache throws away an eight tray. Mark passes. Scott Wilson folds. Now it's around to our chip leader, Phil Gordon. Oh, I forgot about the whole card cameras. He's got a very sneaky suited connector, a six five of hearts. He and he quickly calls 10 more thousand, so we're going to have a flop here. A pot between the two chip leaders, right on hand one. 
Flop is King Jack seven. King Jack seven with two clubs. He does not hit Phil, but Masood has hit top pair. It's gonna be on Phil. Now folks, we know he has nothing because of the WPT can. Check. And he checks. checks. Fifty. And Masood's not gonna play any games with his top pair of kings. He's gonna bet fifty thousand. Right into the chip leader, who has absolutely nothing. And Phil folds. He goes away very wisely. Nice hand. And Masood is going to take the first pot here at Bay 101. Yeah, it always feels good to get that first one under your belt. And give Masood a little credit there. He wasn't afraid to raise the chip leader who was sitting in the big blind with all those chips. Mm. It's a little scary when you're betting that much, and I've got this much, right? <laughs> I wanted to use the guy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And not so subtle bragging right there. <laughs> I happen to agree with Phil there. <laughs> it is a little scary when you're betting into a monster chip leader like that. Oh, he wants to instill the fear right from the get-go. <laughs> but right now it's going to be on Mark Mache, the Canadian who has a four deuce of clubs. He's not going to play it. It's up to Scott Wilson now. He folds. Around to Phil again. He's got another suited connector, 6-5 of diamonds this time. Yeah. Same hand, different suit. He comes in for 20000 now it's on Chris Moneymaker with an 8-3 of diamonds. What's he thinking about? I don't know what he's thinking about. 8-3 is about the worst hand you can have. He's in position. But there's no law against playing horrible hands in poker. He's going to throw this one away. Chris passes. Now Susie Kim has picked up a real hand. She's got the octopus's pair of eights. Two snowmen, and she calls. Just calls it. Masood with a seven of diamonds. He said he also calls. So here we go, Vince. Three-way action here early at this final table. Here comes a flop. Jack nine nine. Susie's first. And we can see Susie has the best hand with two eights. She checks though. Masood quickly checks. And look at this. Phil Gordon with a six five. Folks is on a stone bluff. He comes out and bets thirty thousand. Well, he's going to play aggressive. You got to respect this kind of play. Right into Susie. Phil with absolutely nothing at this point. I'm going to raise. She is going to raise it, Vince. Whoa. What a nice play by Susie Kim right here to raise the chip leader with two eights and under pair. She's not going for Phil's baloney here. Standing firm with a pair of eights. She makes it 75,000 to go. Masood quickly goes away. <laughs> I'm looking at Phil. It looks like he's got flu symptoms right there. He looks absolutely <laughs> sick. Well, he knows he's got his hand caught in the cookie jar here. But I am really impressed with Susie because she knows Phil Gordon's an extremely aggressive player. She sensed he was just trying to pick up this pot with a bet. Okay, Susie. And he says, okay, Susie, take it. But what a nice check raise by Susie. Now, Vince, that's knowing your player. Thank you. She sensed he was trying to pick up a pot there with nothing. Nice play by Susie Kim and right there, Vince. Susan Kim, and I'm from the Bay Area, and I'm a homemaker right now. I learned how to play Texas Hold'em in business school seven, eight years ago. My total tournament experience the last two days has been 90%. I'm the long shot local. <laughs> <laughs> she is a mother a wife and a poker player and a very gutsy one at that. Okay. Action's on Chris. He folds. Susie this time with queen four clubs going away. Masood looks at eight three and folds. And to Mark Mache who's got jack nine. The button in front of him. A nice position. Well he's in favorable position but maybe not in this case because the major chip leader is in the big blind here but it doesn't stop him. He comes in for 20,000. And right behind him, his buddy, Scott Wilson's got an ace jack. Call. Call. He opts to call the 20,000. Around to Phil, he's got an 8-6 off suit. That cost him another 10,000 to call. Look at him eyeing over their chips here. Look at this, Vince. 200,000 with an 8-6 offsuit here. He is gambling. He's putting the pressure on these guys. Well, this is what's called power poker, folks. You're watching the chip leader go up against the short stacks. He knows it's going to cost them all their chips if they play. He knows they don't want to go out in sixth place. This is nice power poker by Phil Gordon. 
Will it work? Oh, he's doing it with a horrible hand, too. <laughs> An 8-6 offsuit. I've seen better hands on a chicken. Mind if I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Can he call a friend? That's what he wants to know. <laughs> oh, well that's one hand you don't need a cell phone for. Well, that's, I'll tell you one thing. If he calls a friend and they say, call here, give me that friend's number. I want him in my game. <laughs> uh, you're right about that. Now he's going to do the right thing. He's going to go away. Well, now Scott Wilson really has a decision here because he does have a hand. I got to be careful. I got I got this monster stack to my left. This is this is it here. Do I, uh, do I make a stand now. Well, because of the WPT cam, we're screaming out, "Yes, yes, you can go ahead and do it." But on the other hand, if you're sitting there. Do you want to gamble all your money with an ace jack? If you're wrong, you're going to be out of here in sixth place. Could double up quite nice. That'll be pretty. That'll put me in a better position. I believe the way Scott is studying his man, Phil, though. He's looking him over. He's asking questions, trying to get a read on him. Well, Vince, this is what poker's all about, especially championship poker, making correct decisions. Will Scott make the correct decision here? If you win the pot, you got well over half a million in chips. But remember, if you lose it, you're out of here in sixth place. Scott Wilson, only 33 years old, just decided to play this tournament a week ago with his buddy on his right. And here they are both at the final table. And he looks back at his hand again. It's still there, Scott. These guys got to know that the huge chip leader is going to try to pressure them. But it's very, very tough to make this kind of call. All right, let's go. But he's okay, call it. he's doing it. Well, give him credit, folks. Win or lose this pot, he's made the correct decision. In poker, oh. that's all you can do. Now, because Phil is pot committed, as we say, he calls him quickly. And everything is backfiring so far for Phil Gordon. Good call. Oh, he looks poker punched at this point. Scott outplaying him here so far, way out in front. Pretty good favorite. 60 40 or so. If Phil should get lucky, he could knock out this man. Here we go. Let's see the flop. Oh, and the flop has hit Scott. He's hit his top pair. Scott's flopped the top pair to Jack. But Phil has an open ended straight draw. Correct. He can win this pot if a four or a nine comes up. Nine to make a straight. Scott right. smiling. Both players kind of like their action. Very entertaining, Phil. Very entertaining. But Phil is behind at this point. Here comes the turn. The well, a deuce comes off. Does not help, Phil. We know what we don't want to see. So Phil Gordon needs a four or nine, or Scott Wilson is going to double up. Here's the river, Mike. It's a seven. Ah, and he does it. He, he does holds it. him off. He doubles up. Give Scott Wilson credit there, Vance. It's not easy to make that call for all your money this early at the final table. Everybody wants a little air time. Nobody wants to go out, but he is going for the victory. I like that play right there. Right now he is doubled up. He's right back into action. A tremendous call there by Scott Wilson. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more poker action from Bay 101 Shooting Star on the World Poker Tour. I had set a kind of personal goal for myself to get into the money. An amazing learning experience. Amazing. In poker, it's good to have multiple personalities. I'm always mixing up my play to keep people guessing. Who will I be this hand? Trapping Gus, who check raises your chips away. Aggressive Gus who plays every hand no matter what, how I play is up to you. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. It's a great time here. It's been a fun weekend. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, coming to you from Northern California at Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. Now Mike, before we get too far along, it's time that we tell the people out there 
how we play the game that we love and adore here on the World Poker Tour. Well, that's right, Vince. And in keeping with the theme of this event, we're going to have some poker stars tell us a little bit more about the game that can make you or break you. The name of the game is No Limit Hold'em. Takes a minute to learn. And a lifetime to master. I just learned that the hard way. <laughs> to start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards are placed face up on the table. Each player combines his two down cards with the community cards to make the best five card poker hand. That's right, Mike, and betting is what this game is really all about. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. Now in poker, we call this the flop, and you bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card on the table. We also call that the turn card. Another round of betting follows. Then the last card, called the river card, is turned up on the table. There's a final round of betting, you turn over your cards, and you see who wins. Still six left here. The Bay 101 shooting stars, and it's going to be on Masood Shojay. Throws away a 6-4 diamonds. Mark Mache now looks down at a nice hand. He has a pair of jacks. Wired pair of jacks for the Canadian. He caps his cards. Always a sign you're going to play the hand. And he's going to raise it. Raises it. Comes in for 20,000. Scott going out. Scott is out. Phil Gordon quickly calls with ace three of clubs on the button in position. And Moneymaker going away with a 4 3. Round to Susie. Just cost her 10 more thousand to call. Susie calls and Susie line. calls also with the King Deuce off suit. Here comes the flop. It's an ace, eight, five. This is hit. Phil Gordon he has a pair of aces. Well, action's on Susie. She checks. she checks. And now it's on Mark. Well, he could be heading for a little white water here. That kind of flop hurts. You have your pair of jacks, and boom, an ace right on the flop. But he's going to bet this nevertheless. Well, he bets 30,000. Right into Phil Gordon. Now, Phil knows 30,000 is not a big bet. There's over 70,000 in the pot. So what's he going to do? And our chip leader, Phil Gordon. Pair of aces with the second card, not that strong. A bad kicker. It's a three of clubs. So far today, Phil, everything backfiring. Can he make up for it here? Well, he folds his hand, Vince. Oh, he's going to play a little conservative. Yes, Throwing he does. away the aces with the bad kicker. Susie quickly lays her hand down, so you have to give Mark credit. He bet the two jacks. He got Phil Gordon to lay down two aces. Amazing to see Phil lay that down. Look at the two Canadians. You know what? These two guys decided just a week prior to this, hey, let's play a tournament on the World Poker Tour, and they actually made a bet between each other who's going to last the longest. Well, the bet's still going because they're both still here. It's just incredible. Scott Wilson and Mark Mache aren't just finalists here at Shooting Star. They're also friends who go way back, all the way to Canada. My name's Mark Mache. My name's Scott Wilson. I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, but I currently reside in San Jose, Costa Rica. Scott and I, we worked at the same brokerage firm. Getting back about nine, ten years now. We like to gamble. We always get together probably every three months or so to go on a gambling-related holiday. I have a beautiful wife, Nadia, and I have a uh, nine-month-old son, Max. So he's not as uh, footloose and fancy-free as I am. I, I wasn't even going to come, but he, he sort of forced my hand, and then I said, oh, there's no question we're going. I've uh, sent your entry in, and we're in. It turned out to be um, a lot more than we expected. That's the beauty of it, because we actually uh, had a, a last longer bet. The guy that's out first has to pay the entry for the guy that's still in it. So we show up day one, and we both get our buy-in free rolling. So we decided it would be better if your penalty for going out early was you just had to cheer on the other guy. We get him in money. We go, let can we make it to the final 10? This is what's happened. So the only thing left is to be the last two standing. Yeah, I've got my eyes on Mark. Basically, I just want to knock Scott. For pride reasons, I have to finish above him. Because 10 years from now, 20 years from now, money will be gone and whatever. But I just want to be able to pull out the DVD. And hold over him for a long time. And what a story. Two buddies show up at a tournament. 243 players start, and they're at the final table. Back to the next hand. Masood going out, and now it's once again on Mark Mache. He's got another wired pair of nines. He's picking up those good starting hands. Well, he caps his cards. Looks like he is going to raise it. 25. And yes, 25. he comes in for 25,000. 
Scott Wilson with a king deuce, throwing it away. Real quickly folding. Right to Chris Moneymaker with an ace five this time. Chris folds. Around to Susie Homemaker, and this time she's got a hand. She's got the octopuses once again, pair of eights. She's already got some money in the pot, Mike. Well, she's on the short stack also, Vince, with 135000 Does she want to make a stand with these two eights? We can see her opponent has two nines. Here, raise. Raise. She is going to raise it, though, Vince. She's going to play aggressive. Well, in. She's going all in with it. Yes, she is. She's done it. She's gone all in. And now she's put Mark to the test. Well, because of the WPT cam, we can see he's in a dominating position with two nines. But he probably assumes she's got at least two overcards. And if there are a pair of overcards, he's in dire straits. Does he want to gamble here with the two nines? Tremendous squeeze play by Susie Homemaker. And although she's up against it here, Vince, I like this play. She's on the short stack. She's making a stand with the two eights. Going to put her opponent to the test here. Now, fortunately for him, she has fewer chips than he does. So even if he plays and loses this pot, he won't be out of the tournament. Does he want to take a chance? Play the two nines here. Try to knock Susie out of the tournament. I call. Well, he's going to call it. Uh-oh, well, right now, Susie Kim is in big trouble, Vince. Yeah. She has two eights. Mark has two nines. He is going to love it when he sees her hand. Oh, he is a huge favorite. Turns up oh. his nine, and she turns up eights, and oh. he gives it the fist. He knows he couldn't be in better shape right oh, now. And Susie just laughing it off. Yeah. She gave it her best, but she's going to be a huge underdog. She well. is very close to becoming our sixth-place finisher with those eights against nines. I feel like I'm on the road. <laughs> she knows she's up against it. Can she get lucky and stay alive? Here we go with our flop. Well, flop is king, deuce, deuce. Oh, wow. This is bad. No help for Susie. Now, Susie is going to have to catch an eight. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, she's going to be our sixth place finisher. And here we go with the turn card. Oh, my God. Oh, an eight. It is an eight. Oh. She's done it. She just has a chance. Oh. She has outgrown the hockey player from Canada. Oh. She oh. is so excited. Look at her. Now she says, come on, let's get this over with here. Oh, I dude. want my to hold up. Oh, one more card to come, a two-outer for Mark. Well, she knows she's got lucky to take the lead in this pot. Will the three-eighths hold up? Can she dodge a nine? Here's the river. Yes, she does. She dodges it. Susie Homemaker just bringing home the bacon right now. Vince, when you're playing a poker tournament and you get lucky and outdraw your opponent like that, it feels like an omen to you. You think, wow, maybe this is my day after all. And she has so many fans here in this hometown crowd. You know you got the one lucky break you needed. Can no, you carry the ball I'm from here? I'm all in on the flop. I'm... Oh, Vince, what pain there. Mark, who played some hockey when he was younger, has got to feel like he was body checked over the rail right there. Nothing worse than poker pain. Can he regroup and bounce back? Action's going to be on him right now. He sighs a little bit and takes a deep breath, and he's got queen nine. Lays it down. Scott Wilson going out. Phil quickly going out with a king three. And to Chris Moneymaker. 25. He's raising it with a 4-8 off suit here, folks. He's taking a stab. Susie gets out. Now it's on Masood, who's got a queen 10. Call. And Masood's going to call out of the big blind with queen 10 off suit. Masood calls. Here we go with a flop. Uh, flop is 9-5-3. No help to either player. Look at this. Masood going for some chips, Vince. He only has Queen 50, 10 off suit here. 50,000. He's going to bet into bets. the raiser. He bets 50,000 into Moneymaker here. Bold play. Come on. Moneymaker is all in. Whoa. Without hesitation, Moneymaker comes over the top for all his chips with absolutely nothing. All in with Zip and Pip. What a move by Moneymaker. This is an amazing play by Moneymaker because if he's called here and loses this pot, he's out in sixth place. I know you have two overcards. 
That's all you got. Little do you know, Masood, he's got two undercards. So I can't see how there's any way you can call 170,000 more with just Queen High. I'll let you get away with this. And he, and he lays it down. Oh, man, that is a stubborn, committed, gutsy raise by Chris Moneymaker and quite successful there. Well, folks, I'll tell you, in poker, we call that earning your pots. He did that with no hand and no draw. What heart Moneymaker showed right there. One of these players is going to walk away with a lot of cash and a shot at the WPT Championship when we come back with more on the World Poker Tour. This so-called amateur sure doesn't look like any amateur. Right now they're toasting each other. <laughs> that feels a little bit better. The bounty is like a gift. Your incentive in it is obviously higher. In this case, five grand. Welcome back to the world famous World Poker Tour. We are at the Bay 101 for the Shooting Star Tournament. And Vance, even though we have a big chip leader, it's still anybody's ball game. That is correct. Phil Gordon losing a lot of chips, but he still has close to 800,000. Then we go back to Scott Wilson with 491. Then Chris Moneymaker with 435. Masood has 370. Susie Kim, Madam X with 270. And our short stack right now is Mark Mache with $55,000. Now it's going to be on Suzy Kim from the Bay Area. This time she's got King Seven off suit. It's going out. Now Masood, he lays his hand down. Round to Mark Mache, Jack Four Hearts. She's not going to play. Scott folds. Phil Gordon with a nine seven of diamonds, calling this. And Chris with Queen Nine says, "Okay, give us a flop." So the battle of the blinds. Here we go with a flop. Flop is nine six four. Look, Vince, they both flop top pair. Phil Gordon had bet fifteen thousand, but Moneymaker with a bigger kicker. That would be his second card, and he's going to raise it. He makes it forty five thousand to go. Right over the top. Phil Gordon quickly calls him. Pot getting pretty oh. big here. So both players have two nines, but Moneymaker's in great shape with a bigger kicker. Here comes the turn. Ten comes on the turn. That's actually a good card for Phil because now he has the inside straight drop. And they both check this. Now Queen comes at the river, giving Moneymaker two pair now. Queens and nines. Phil checks. Phil Gordon checks. Oh, and he's a potential victim right here. Now what do you do? You got your two pair. I like that river card. Mm-hmm. Gives him queens and nines. He's going to bet. And he bets 75,000. I call. Phil Gordon call. calls him with just two nines. Oh, he Shakes his head in disgust. Very unhappy. Well, his moneymaker picks up over a quarter million dollar pot right there. And again, Phil Gordon makes a misstep. Nice play, Chris. Thank you. Well, Vince, he started out as a monster chip leader here at this final table, but so far, absolutely nothing has gone right for him. He's made all the wrong decisions nice at the thing. wrong times. Dismal feeling. This is getting uh, a little out of control here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Phil Gordon. I'm a professional poker player from Las Vegas, Nevada. I dominated the table yesterday. I've got so many chips. They certainly need to be scared. You know, it's a good thing Phil Gordon's not in the marching band because right now he's totally out of step. It looks like somebody stole his napping blanket. <laughs> Just discouraged. Yet he is the chip leader. Yeah, keep that in mind, you know. He could turn this around. I mean, he should be happier than everybody else. He's still got more chips than they do, so no reason to be depressed yet. <laughs> now it's on the young Canadian that lives out of Costa Rica. Now Scott Wilson, he looks at a queen jack. Been very particular what hands he's played today. What's he going to do with this? No, he's going to fold it. Phil quickly yeah, folds. Oh, Mark, I thought I was going to put you on no matter what. I can't do it. Chris Two Moneymaker more. making threats but throwing his hand away. And Susie with ace high on the button in position is going to raise it. 
Oh, he's got a gamble, pushing it up. Comes in for 25,000. Suit looks at a queen six of hearts. He lays it down. Mm -hmm. and now here we go to Mark. He's got ace due, so he's got the ace high. He's on the short stack. Oh, he's got a decision here. And he's got to know that for him to get back in this tournament, something's got to happen and happen fast. Right now he's got less than 50,000. But he's up against his nemesis, the one that hit the trips on the turn. Susie Homemaker, Susie Kim, pushing him around here once again. Yeah. Is it going to be now or never for Mark Mache? Is he going to make a stand here with this ace high? Well, here's the time to get out the cell phone. It's all on the line. $57,000 for sixth place. Okay, I'm all in. All in. He's all right. doing it, man. He He's is. going all in. All right, and we know, of course, he is a little bit of a dog here. It's still going to cost Susie about another 25000 to call, but I can't imagine she'll throw it away with over 100000 out there, so. Is that right? Yep, here she comes. So here we go. It's ace three for Susie, ace deuce for Mark. He wants sweet revenge. He shakes his head when he looks at that. It's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my turn. Quad deuces. I want to see deuce. Here comes the flop. Well, queen ten seven. So this is shaping up to be a split pot if a card over four comes up. And here comes the turn. It's a four of diamonds helping neither player. Now, if a three comes up, Susie wins. If a deuce comes up, Mark wins. Otherwise, it'll be a split pot. Here comes the river card. Six of clubs at the river. It is going to be a split pot. Everybody at the table very happy. Everybody smiling. Except Phil Gordon. Well, Vince, the Bay 101 has outdone themselves this week, but the stars themselves, they haven't fared so well. I haven't seen this many stars get shot down since the Oscars. <laughs> well, here... The poker stars were the celebrities this week, you know, but the other players were taking dead aim on them. Here's Shauna Hyatt to tell us more about this unique event. What happens when you place a bounty on the heads of some of the biggest names in poker? You get a one-of-a-kind free-for-all poker event, and it's called Bay 101 Shooting Star. Um, they got a I think it's one of the best tournaments of the year. It's a nice hotel here, you know, nice casino, you know, good people. Bay 101? Oh, they treat you fantastic. Located just south of San Francisco and home to some of the most action-packed games around, Bay 101 is Northern California's answer to Vegas. Yeah, this is a one-of-a-kind thing. They don't have this anywhere else. If you're a casual player, you got a shot to win your money back right away just by eliminating a star. You know, you can get lucky and beat a guy and uh, pick up 5000 And it's Bay 101's friendly staff and family atmosphere that keep players coming back for more. You come here and everybody knows you from the guards to the cashiers. I always feel comfortable coming here. It's been nice because it's got a small tournament feel. People really enjoy the chance to play with these stars. Overall, I mean, my experience here at Bay 101 have been great. Um, I'll be back every year, for sure. <laughs> With a capacity crowd booked months in advance, this tournament isn't just the hottest ticket in town. For Bay 101, Shooting Star is an event that's shining bright. This is an amazing casino, and the fans love the game, and they're rooting on their hometown favorites here. And the price of poker's gone up now, Vance. We're now playing with a $2,000 ante. Blinds are eight and sixteen thousand. Well, that definitely puts the pressure on you. You can't wait for perfect hands. Well, the pressure is certainly on Mark Mache right here because he's got sixteen thousand of his less than fifty thousand in the pot right now in the big blind. Well, here we go. Scott Wilson going out with King Deuce. Phil throwing away his hand. Now it's on Chris Moneymaker. Takes a look at a Jack Four offsuit. Not going to play. As he folds on the button, and we're down to the battle of the blinds. Be a gentleman. Sorry, Mark. The suit has a king ten offsuit. We're having a good hand. Well, he's announced it to him. He has a good hand. Go. <laughs> he has raised the short stack, Mark Mache. Thirty-eight thousand. <clears throat> I call blind. Well, Mark was in the big blind. Had money committed. He's almost pot committed to call, and he does so. And he's not going to like it. Bottom is a face card. Nice card. Oh, no, not the Mark is all in. Mark absolutely devastated. Knows his 10 deuce does not look good. He's a big dog. Yeah. A lot of compassion between these two guys. Nice to see. 
Deuce. I like you, Deuce. Deuce. He still can get lucky. Well, he better hope some more deuces come up. Can the young Canadian hang in there? Well, here's the flop. There is a deuce. Yeah. Oh, look, he jumps up, but he quickly sits back down as the king appears oh, also. A flicker of hope there. Well, well, he's laughing. He saw the deuce. He got excited, but just about as quick, the king popped up there. A uh, queen on the turn. Not going to help Mark Mache. Well, now for Mark Mache to stay alive in this tournament, he must catch a two on this last card. Otherwise, he'll be our sixth place finisher. Can he hang in there? Young hockey player from Canada. Here comes the river. No, no. It's the King. Mark Mache from Canada will be our sixth place finisher, and he will take home $57,000. Not bad for a guy that just last week decided he was going to show up in this tournament with his friend Scott Wilson and take a stab at this. He's going to walk away a finalist in a World Poker Tour table. And you know what that means? We are down to five. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. against Bay Area local Masood Shoje. With over a million on the line, who will be shot down next at Bay 101's Shooting Star? We are down to five here at the Bay 101. As every player is eliminated, those that remain envision capturing a World Poker Tour title. They are one step closer. Andy's now 2,000 blinds, eight and 16. You got to open up the game just a little bit more now that you're playing five-handed. Okay, it's going to be on the young Canadian. Scott Wilson, this time he has a horrible hand, 8-3. Not going to play. And here comes Phil with two eights, and he raises it up, makes it 50,000 to go. Well, that's a real hand that's going to perk him up. Chris going out, now on Susie. She okay. folds around to the big blind, Masood. Call. And Masood's got a king jack off suit, and he is going to call it. He's got 16,000 out there. He adds 34,000 more to it. So we're going to have a flop here between the two chip leaders. Pair of eights against King Jack. Here we go. Now flop is ace, ten, six. Now notice Masood has flopped an ace high straight draw. The queen would give him a straight, but he checks. He checks into the man that has a pair of eights, but he's going to check it as well. Well, Phil very conservative now. Checks right behind him. Well, a three comes on the turn. Sixty. Look at this. Masood is going to take the lead here. He's coming out with a bet with the inside straight draw. Yes, he is. He took a page out of Moneymaker's playbook there. He saw when they checked. Moneymaker bet and picked up the pot. That time Phil checked. Now he's going to try to pick up the pot, and it's going to work. Well, Phil Gordon lays down his pair. You can't blame him. A gutsy play by Masood, the 44-year-old who's playing in his first big tournament ever. Well, Vince, he's a very bright guy. Got a bachelor's degree in computer engineering and an MBA. He's read about every poker book that there is on the market. And right there, that was a nice poker play to bet on 4th Street after your opponent checked on the flop. Four months ago, for the first time I played the tournament in my life. I really, really like this game. Probably read every book there is on poker. I like to be very aggressive, and I'm going to do that today. If you want to become a World Poker Tour champion, you've got to earn your pots along the way, Vance. You've got to win some pots with the worst hand. Saw Masood do it right there. All right, action's going to be on Chris Moneymaker. He throws away a Jack Deuce. Susie goes out with six Deuce. Back to Masood on the button, throws away a five Deuce. So now we're down to the Battle of the Blinds here. Scott has picked up Ace King, big hand in the small blind. Oh, he's got big slick. He's been very patient so far, waiting for a hand like this. Let's see how he plays it. I think it's 40. Makes it 40,000 to go, he says. Nice little raise right into Phil Gordon, who's got an 8-6 off suit. 40, but he's already 40, invested. And he's going to call this. Yeah, he's going to call. Wants to see a flop. He's in position. 
So here we go. The Battle of the Blinds. Scott with Ace King, Phil with eight six off suit. Here's the flop. When the flop comes up, Queen Jack six. This gives a little piece to Phil Gordon. Well, he flopped bottom pair, as we say. And a one card straight draw to Scott Wilson. Well, Scott is going to bet with the ace high straight draw. Now he only bets thirty thousand. Remember, the pot's got ninety thousand in it. Well, it's a subtle bet here into Phil, who's got a little pair of sixes. Phil raises to ninety thousand. comes over the top with the bottom pair here. Very gutsy re-raise here. He sensed his opponent was a little weak with this flop by only betting 30,000. He's decided to test him here. He re-raised him 60,000 oh. more. Scott's going to make this call, though. Well, Scott's going to call it. He wouldn't think Phil would like that. Well, he's going to call and pray. He'd love a 10. He'd like an ace, of course, or a king. Let's see what happens. Well, a three of clubs comes off. It's not help, Scott Wilson. Now the action's on Scott. Bill glances over out of the corner of his eye, seeing Scott play with his chips here, acting like he wants to bet. Can Scott continue this farce right now? I'll check it. No, well, he he's doesn't. gonna check. Opens the door for Phil. Look at this. This is great. Phil Gordon betting over 200,000 here, folks. An amount that will severely cripple Scott if he calls and loses this pot. Now this is, you know, this shows me a lot about Phil Gordon. Changing gears, making this kind of play, going to push Scott Wilson. We know that Phil only has a pair of sixes. Very, very gutsy, very brave. And I'll see how you call this bet if you're Scott. I think Phil's either put him on a draw or put him on a pair of jacks. In his mind, if I make a big bet right now, either one of those hands will have to lay down. And so far, Phil Gordon. Zigging and zagging tonight. Could this be the hand that gets him back into a commanding chip lead? Well, I'll tell you, if you're sitting there with Scott's hand and you've been re-raised here and then bet 200 and some thousand. You're sickened. Yeah, Ace King doesn't look good anymore, folks, I can tell you. All right, so you take that one. And he lays it down. Oh, yes, he does. And Phil Gordon Phil. masterfully played. Phil Gordon finally getting on the board here, folks. Finally scoring a basket. Remember, he gave away about half his chips here before he got that first pot under his belt. Ah, you got to earn respect. Phil Gordon does it so well there. He's back on track now by picking up that pot. Let's see what happens from here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from the shooting star Bay 101 on the World Poker Tour. to play with so play online at partypoker.com it's fun it's easy it's the world's largest poker room you fold it amir was sitting at my table i managed to collect his bounty so I took that one down. Welcome back to Northern California and Bay 101 Shooting Star. This week's stop on the World Poker Tour. Now back to the guys at the center of all the action, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Well, the World Poker Tour has landed in the middle of a shootout at the Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. That is right, Mike. Big money here. Let's take a quick look at the players that are still surviving. Let's do it. Phil Gordon never stopped believing in himself. Now he is back. Playing well. Still our chip leader. And finally picking up his first pot, so he's got to be feeling better. And here we go again. Action is on Chris Moneymaker. He's got a pretty decent King-10 offsuit. He's just going to call. He's going to limp in, as we say. Susie Kim throwing away 9-5. Masood going out. Susie Masood call. Around to Scott. I'll call. He's going to call out of the small blind. Well, he's got some money in there. He's got 7-6 off suit. All right. So Phil Gordon says, all right. Phil with a queen deuce off suit. So here we go. Three-way action here between Scott, Phil, and Chris. Here comes a flop. 
King 9-8. Now notice what's happened here. Scott's flopped an open in straight draw. And Chris Moneymaker's got the top pair of kings. 30. Well, Scott's going to lead out and bet. I like that play. Phil quickly going out. And Moneymaker just calls. He doesn't raise with the top pair here. KG play by Moneymaker. Here we go with the turn. Can Scott find it? Nope. Three, well, three, of, diamonds. three of diamonds comes off. Now Moneymaker's got to love that card. Another 30. Now look at this. Another 30,000. A very small bet into a $120,000 pot here. That's what we call a post oak bluff. But Moneymaker's not going for it. He pops it up 60,000 more. Yes, he does. And now Scott is faced with a decision. What's your game, Moneymaker? What's your game? I think his game like is making eight? money. That's what he wants to do to you right now. Flush draw? What are you up to? What is it, 60,000 to call? Well, it's going to cost him 60 more thousand to call. And if he calls this, it's not just for the 60,000. It's the implied odds he's going to get. I'll call. Because he thinks he can win the rest of Moneymaker's chips. Well, he's going to call it. He is going to gamble here. Let's see if he can catch it. He needs a 5 or a 10 to make it straight. Here it comes. Will he get it? No. no. He does make a pair of sevens. But that's a little bit of a scare card. And then it makes a straight possibility in case he held a 10 and a jack. Well, now he's thinking to himself, do I continue to will I try to bluff this hand? No, he's not. Well, it's going to go check, check. The moneymaker's going to win this pot with two kings. Yes, he does. Nice size pot for Chris Moneymaker. But you have to like the way Moneymaker played that hand on the flop. He just called on the flop. He made his move on 4th Street when the three came off. Chris, I think your dad stood up on that one. So. Chris Moneymaker with so many fans. He won a major tournament last year. Great guy, too. His father in the audience. Nice to have your family here when you're going after millions. <laughs> Of course, Man. that's really not the time you need your family around, when you? No, but that's when they show up, Vince. Yeah, it seems like <laughs> it. Well, the action's going to be on Masood. He's got a queen five off suit. He's going to go out. Now around to Scott. He's picked up a pair of sevens here. He's got the sunset strip, 77. Well, they're called walking sticks in England. Forty thousand he bets. Round well, to Phil Gordon. This time Phil's got an ace five of clubs. He opts we'll to call. First money maker. King seven of diamonds. Lowers the sunglasses too. Throws it away. Susie's picked up a nice hand. The big blind. The king jack of clubs. Yes, yeah, she does. Susie homemaker. Let's see if she'll get involved here. Well, she's on the short stack here. What she's contemplating is, do I want to play it? And if I do, do I just call or do I move oh. in? Oh, she's just going to call it. Yes, she is. She's just calling. We're going to see a flop here. Three-way action. Nearly 140000 in the pot right now. Here comes a flop. Jack, 10, deuce. Look at that. Susie's hit top pair. Jacks. That's on her first. Well, it's hard to believe she'll fool around with this. Look at this. She's going all in. Yeah, she's going to do it. No free cards for anybody. Not fussing around. She doesn't have that much money. Only got 90000 left. She moves all in. Now, Scott, two sevens just shrunk up a little bit, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's the danger of playing those mid pairs softly. If it doesn't flop a set, you're usually in trouble. Look at him. Does not like this position right now. Well, even if she has a king-queen here, Vince, even if she had a straight draw, or if she had a flush draw, she wouldn't be an underdog to two sevens here. And Scott wisely lays this yes, hand down. Does. Now Phil with the ace high. Oh, oh, look, he's getting out the binoculars there, Vince. Oh, that's, that's funny. That's funny. Well, he's zooming in on Susie. She is a good-looking lady. Nothing like taking a few props to the poker table. Well, he calls this his tail meter, but uh, 
You know, a guy that carries around binoculars, man, you got to wonder what he did in college, you know? <laughs> Where's the trench coat, Phil? <laughs> And so, chip so. leader making jokes here, lots of gags. And the short stack picking up a pot, so everybody happy here. So Phil Gordon trying to soften up his competitors with a little laughter. But right now it's going to be on the Canadian, Scott Wilson, with a 6-4. He folds. Phil's got an interesting jack-10 of clubs this time. Phil calls six and he's just going to call with it. Chris folds. Chris is out. Right to Susie Kim. Susie in the small blind with 8 6 off suit. She folds. folds. On to Masood. Masood in the big blind has picked up two sevens. Go ahead. He says go ahead. He just checks. He doesn't raise with the pair after Phil Gordon limped in. So here comes a flop. 10 9 3 with two spades. Oh, that is nice for Phil. He's hit the top pair. Masood getting up some chips. Check. But he checks. Check. Phil Gordon, who's flopped top pair, best 25,000. I raise. Raise. But Masood has checked and raised this. And believe me, if you're Phil Gordon, you don't like to be check raised by this guy. 60 more. 50. Because he's a pretty solid player. He's gone up 50,000 more, but look at this. Phil quickly calling it. Yep, without hesitation, he calls with a top pair. So here we go to 4th Street. Turn card. Here it is. Next card is a five. five of diamonds. Helps neither player. 50. Now he's betting 50,000. 50, Phil Gordon 50, quickly calls this bet. Phil Surprised call. Phil wouldn't raise it there, just in case his opponent was on a draw. We're going to see the river. Here it comes. And the river comes up a four. I check. Now Phil's got to like that card. He turns up his two tens. He doesn't bet. Nice hand. Thank you. Oh, well, he's content just to take this pot. He's going to win this pot. So Phil Gordon says, give it to me. A $300,000 pot he picks up. Got a lot of chips. Everything looks rosy for Phil Gordon at this moment. Can Phil pull out his first WPT victory, or will he be shot down at Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament? Stay tuned. We'll find out in a moment on the World Poker Tour. Northern California and Bay 101 Shooting Star, this week's stop on the World Poker Tour. I'm Shauna Hyatt, and here's a recap of the action so far. Canadian Mark Mache was the first fatality. Shot down with a short stack by local favorite Masood Shoje, who continues to prove he's more than poker book smart, gunning for chip leader Phil Gordon. It's a little scary when you're betting that much, and I've got this much, right? But Phil, at his second WPT final table, has more than one chip on his shoulder as he attempts to fire rounds at first-timer Susie Kim and the second Canadian, Scott Wilson. Very entertaining, Phil. Very entertaining. But there's another force for Phil to reckon with, champion player Chris Moneymaker, who continues to aim for first place with five players over a million in cash and one shooting star left standing. Everyone is reloading for this showdown at the shooting star. The World Poker Tour has landed in the middle of a shootout here at Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. Players amped up, ready to go. We started with 243. We are down to five. Action on the chip leader. Time looks at an 8-3. He's going to throw it away. And the moneymaker, look at this. He's going to raise it with 9-7 of clubs. Susie quickly going out with Jack 8. Masood throws away 10 5. Now we're around to Scott Wilson, who's picked up King 9 of Diamonds. Raise it, uh, making 100 plus the blind, so 116. 
Scott's in the big blind, but he's going to raise it. He's going to try to push Chris Moneymaker out of this right now. Well, he's raised him 66000 And Moneymaker's going to look at the flop here, Vince. Look at this call. With the 9 7 of clubs, he's up against King 9 of diamonds. He is one stubborn good old boy, I'll tell you that much. Well, he's looking to gamble. He's in position here. 9 7 versus King 9. Here comes a flop. 776, seven, bingo, bingo, bongo for Moneymaker. He's flopped three sevens. Oh, and look at him dueling oh, banjos going, going off in his head right now. <laughs> so excited. Action is on Scott, though. Matt doesn't like the banjos. You normally, when a guy re raises before the flop, you think he'd just go ahead and bet this flop <laughs> when a pair comes out there. But he is slowed down. But he knows if he loses this pot, it's his Waterloo. He'll be out of here. Look at Moneymaker. So still, balance a dish on his head right now. Now what he's saying is, please bet that money you get sitting in front of you. Please bet it. A lot of prayers going on right now. I've flopped three sevens. I want you in there. Will he be able to trap this victim here? Scott Wilson. I'll check it. Scott Doing the check. right thing. He's going to check well, it. He finally checks it. Moin. Moneymaker says, I'm all in. And that's interesting. Now, Scott only has about 110,000. Well, I'm a little surprised that Moneymaker bet right there, quite frankly. I mean, if Scott had a flush draw or any possible straight draw or a big pair, he would have bet on that flop. Well, Once he checked, it looks like there's no card he can catch to win it. I don't have enough to get that shirt off you. Yeah. <laughs> Hardly makes it worthwhile. So I'll let you have that one. He's going to go away. Yeah, you can't win the bounty when the bounty has more chips than you do. That's what Scott was referring to there. He lays his hand down. So Moneymaker on a little roll here. Whoever busts Chris Moneymaker gets five thousand dollars. What a player this guy is. Only 28 years old. Great player. Accountant turned champion Chris Moneymaker is proving he's not just an overnight success. This Moneymaker knows how to make money. Chris Moneymaker, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm an accountant and uh, play poker on the side. I've been married to my wife, Kelly, a couple years now. One-year-old daughter just started walking. I have a deal that I'm not going to play full-time. I'm going to keep my job, and I want to stay at home, and she wants me at home. In just three years, this part-timer has earned $2.5 million and become a household name. So how does he handle this newfound notoriety? I can't believe the reception I get. People come up to me all the time. Thank you. Chris, when did I find you? It just... It blows my mind. But sudden fame doesn't always bring instant respect. A lot of people have this notion that he has been extremely lucky. I found him to be really a lucky player. Oh, everyone's going to say that, and especially as they walk away from the table, they're going to be upset with it. So, is being a target common for this world champion? It's tough. You know, at first I had to adjust my style of play to being a known player. Spent a couple tournaments, get my brains kicked in. Hopefully I've got a little bit better grasp on it now. Call me lucky every time I win or make it to the final table. That's, that's fine. I'll be the luckiest man in the world. So sometimes the obvious play is the right play. Chris Moneymaker making that work. He's now moved into second chip position with 642,000. <laughs> Phil Gordon still our chip leader with nearly a million in chips. Here we go again. It's not going to see much. Or it? um, Scott Wilson, he goes out with an ace eight. When he's on the short stack, some people would play an ace eight there. He opted to fold. Right behind him, Phil Gordon with ace seven diamonds. Yeah, he comes in for 35,000. Now it's up to Moneymaker, and look at this. Moneymaker's picked up another nine seven suited. This time, hearts. Last time he struck oil with the nine seven of clubs, he calls. Susie goes out. Now Masood with queen nine is going to call as well. So here we go. Three-way action. Here's the flop. Flop is eight, seven, four, all clubs. And here comes Masood. 50. Now he doesn't have any piece of that, but he's betting it. Boy, that's a bold to bet. When you get two players sitting behind you right there. And Phil Gordon has a piece of it. He's got the sevens, and he's going to call it. No club in his hand, though. I notice Moneymaker also has a pair of sevens. <laughs> Getting some heckles in the audience to call this. <laughs> you guys want me to go all in? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, they asked the audience if they want him to go all in. Crazy. I can tell you his two opponents done. didn't want him to go all in. He'd have won the pot probably. 
But here we go. It's heads up action. Here's the turn. Now the board pairs eight. Respect for you. Check. Respect for you. I check. Respect for that horrible hand you have, you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a better way to put it. Respect for your cash. Well, Phil's not fooling with it. He's going to bet 80000 This is a gutsy bet by Phil. You know, he doesn't have a club in his hand. He's got the sevens. I'm sure he feels his opponent either has a straight draw or a flush draw. Doesn't want to give him a free card to beat him. And Made Masood. a very nice bet right there to pick up that pot. Yes, he does. And good things for Phil Gordon. He is back in step. He's taking control. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more World Poker Tour action from Northern California. Welcome back to the Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. We saw Phil Gordon start out with a monster chip lead. He lost about half his chips, and now he's back about to where he started the day. He's got close to 1.2 million. And the price of poker's gone up again here, Vince. We're now playing with a $3,000 ante. Blinds are 12 and 24,000. Action on the chip leader, Phil Gordon. He takes a peek at an A7. And he's feeling good right now. He's picked up 600,000 back after losing 600,000 early today. Here he goes again. Yeah, he's going to make it 110,000, just putting the pressure right on him. Into the money man. Chris Moneymaker. A6. He's not yep. going to call. Susie lays her hand down. Masood's going to throw away his 10 deuce. And now Scott Wilson. I'd really appreciate it if you doubled me up like in the last. That, okay. That'd be great. And in the big we'll blind, he said, I appreciate it if you okay, double me up. up. And he's, he's going all in. in. He's going to need a little help. He's got queen 10. This is your pot for sure. Six outs, my man. <laughs> well, right now, Good time, Phil Gordon's about a dollar fifty yeah, favorite to win the pot, about a three to two favorite. I six outs, absolutely. I, I can't you absolutely did the right thing. Out. Absolutely did the right thing. Now, Phil says this is your pot for sure. This is a gambler that's doing a reverse okay. psychology a thing. We all know this too well. Yeah. Let's see if the ace I holds up or the queen 10 of Scott holds up. 10 queen. Here's the flop. Oh. There's a 9 7 deuce, oh. all spades. Spade out. Now, spades. what this gives Scott is a flush draw. Spade, 10, queen, any of that would be nice. And with that flop, Scott it becomes a favorite in this hand. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with it. I like it. I like my chances. Come on, give me something. Come on. Give me something. Ace of Spades would be actually. He is begging for a hand right now. Scott Wilson Speed on the ropes here. Can he get it? Out. He did. I got out. I got Ace of Spades came out. up. Yes, he did. He's hanging in there. He's got his flush. They called the guy called the back of the public card. Unbelievable. I'm calm now. I'm feeling good. No, it's not Go over yet. No, it's not. Phil Gordon has aces and sevens. If Phil Gordon catches an ace or a seven, he'll oh. do it. He doesn't do it. No, River cards are six of diamonds. Right. So Scott Wilson got lucky and doubled up to stay alive. Double. So, so far, he is feeding off Phil Gordon. Who called that ace of spades? Oh, this good. guy, what a story. Well done. Thinks about playing with his friend about Excellent. a week ago. He says, hey, let's come out and play a tournament. They both play it, and here he is. Guaranteed fifth prize money here at the Bay 101. Scott doubled up one more time against Phil Gordon. Play goes to Susie Kim. Looks at a jack three off suit. Not interested. Action's on Masood. Look at this, he's picked up ace jack of diamonds. Okay. Well, it's a big hand and he's gonna raise with it. Comes in for 50,000. Scott throwing away a king eight. 300. 300,000 here by Phil Gordon with two nines. Oh, he's got the Wayne Gretzky. He has bet 300,000. On Moneymaker. Now Moneymaker's got a big hand, he's got ace queen of hearts. I'm all in. And he's gone all in. Yes, he is. It was raised 50,000 by Masood, 300,000 by Phil Gordon, and now Chris Moneymaker has gone all in for nearly 650,000. He's waited for this type of quality hand. Now here's Masood. It's back to him. He has ace jack now. He's got nearly about 350,000 left. Now this would be a very he's tough call. He's but he's going to call it. Wow. Now, folks, he's gambling here. Hard to believe that he's calling 350,000 more with Ace Jack. And this puts Phil Gordon into a precarious position. We know he's got the legitimate pair of nines, but what do you do now? 
Wow. You know, you hate to play against two opponents with two nines. You don't mind playing against one. We know because of the WPT cam, he's in front, and look at this, he's gonna lay it down. Yep, he shows him a nine to get out of the way. He probably lays it down, little does he know that he actually would have been out in front. Oh, God, I knew it. The face queen of hearts versus ace jack of diamonds. I knew he was making Money a maker in great shape right here to win a huge pot. I knew you were making a move on me. If he doesn't call, I call you in a shot. Phil says, I call you in a shot if he doesn't stick his nose in there. He's defending his he position. Me, well, so look, fast. he would have won at least that much money in the side pot if he played, so I'm not necessarily buying that so story. Unlucky. How much do I have? All right. Still worth 800000 in this pot. Yeah, I can't believe Masood calling this, and so quickly, too. So here we go. So Moneymaker has more money than Masood. Let's take a look at this flop. Nine. See what happens. No well, flop is 10-7-3. Oh, uneventful. Well, no help for either player. So right now, Masood's going to have to catch a jack. Otherwise, he's going to be out of here in fifth place. And it's a nine. Well, there's a nine. Phil Gordon just committed Harry Carey off on the side. Now, this card also gives Masood a straight draw. Yeah, it does. He can now win the pot with an eight or a jack. If he doesn't get that, he will be eliminated. He will be our fifth place finisher. He needs an eight or a jack. Can he do it? Let's look at the river. Oh, it's an eight. Oh. Wow. Moneymaker takes his hat off. Masood is clapping. Oh. A terrible card. beat for Chris Moneymaker right there. He's a good sport, comes over and shakes his hand, says yeah. good shot. That's as bad as it gets, Mike. I wish you call now. <laughs> Masood yeah. outdrawing the Moneymaker incredibly. I should have just stayed out of the way. Back in business. I got unlucky, but I got real lucky, I guess. I'm still alive. Well, Vance, I was a shooting star here for years, and I can tell you, it's like having a bullseye on your chest and a room full of sharpshooters. It must be very lonely at the top. Hey, easy. Now, let's talk about these players. These guys had to play for two days straight. They were all gunning to make the final table, but on top of that, they had the extra incentive of this bounty, and that is worth $5,000 if you can knock out a big poker star. Shauna Hyatt dodged a few bullets while she focused on amateurs versus pros in this week's Poker Corner. Brought to you by Anheuser World Select. Rookie or ringer, having a strategy is vital to success in tournament poker. But if you're a pro and everyone at the table has you in their sights, cunning can be crucial to your survival. This is a great tournament. It's a lot of fun. You see the bullseye on my head here? That's... <laughs> I'm a moving target. <laughs> it's harder being a star because you know people are going to gamble with you more. You know, they're looking to, to pick you up. I can see their eyes, man. They're all hungry sharks. <laughs> so how do the pros handle being sitting ducks in a shooting gallery with players gunning for more than a stuffed animal? I think I'm going to cut a little down on my aggressive style and just take it easy. Doesn't change my strategy, it changes there. And I'm still gonna play top hand. I never have a strategy. I'm just gonna go in there and try and get some chips and make it to tomorrow. They're gonna get a little greedy and a little anxious and they're gonna overplay their hands and I'm gonna let them kind of trap themselves. Oh yeah, you can't help it. I mean, there's extra money in the pot if you beat them, so you have to go after them. It takes a lot of your bluff out of the game. So if you move in with a short stack, you better have it. The bounty is a unique aspect because every time you're at a table, the person with the bounty is, it's almost like a gift in this case, five grand. Chance of a lifetime. It's fun, you get a t-shirt. The felt may seem greener on the other side, but in tournament poker, novice or pro, nobody's bulletproof. And we have one shooting star left at the table, that is Chris Moneymaker. And for the first time today, Phil Gordon is not our chip leader at this final table. No, the hometown local Masood Shojay, our chip leader with 822,000. Right behind him is Phil Gordon with 812. How much is next place getting? Actually, it's going to be on Scott Wilson, <laughs> who peaks at 107. Not going to play. Look at this. Phil Gordon picks up two nines again. Again. His nightmare hand from a moment ago. 99 Wayne Gretzky, and he's going to raise this up again. Yes, he is. Chris Moneymaker throwing away Queen 4. Now it's on Susie. And look at this. Susie Kim has picked up two sixes in the small blind. Yeah, she has a wired pair also. Well, she has about 200,000 left.
I'm all in. She's going all in with events. She is plunging. She has moved all in with two sixes here. Masood folds. Back around to Phil, and he's got a legitimate pair of nines. How do you get away from this? I call, he says. He doesn't get away from them. He's going to love it when he sees her hand. Oh, she's sickened when she sees that. But a big laughter from Susie. What a good sport. Well, Vince, if you remember earlier, she had two eights up against two nines. She was all in then. She spiked an eight to stay alive. Can she do it again and outdraw her opponent when they have an over pair? See you. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> it's now or never, Mike. Stay tuned and find out what happens when we continue on the World Poker Tour from Bay 101. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour at Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. And Susie Kim got lucky earlier. Well, we got the race situation. It's two nines against two sixes. Can they hold up this time? Here we go with the flop. 3-3 three, three deuce. Does not help Susie at this point. She shakes her head. She can win this pot if she catches two running hearts, catches a four and a five, or catches a six. Well, she got lucky on the turn the last time. Will she this time? No. Well, a three comes on the turn. That means Susie must catch a six to stay alive. Here comes the river. Say your prayers. Here it is. Oh, hey, she doesn't do it. No, she does it, and Susie Kim will be our fifth place finisher. She played very, very well, whole tournament. Picking up 68,000. Well, she gets hugs all around, standing ovation from the crowd. And Vince, you gotta appreciate her play today. Well, she's a future poker superstar. I mean, she played wonderfully. She's only been playing a couple of years. She has a lot of charisma. They love her here. Yes, they do. And we are down to four players, Mike, at the Bay 101. Uh, once again, Phil Gordon recaptures the chip lead, crosses the million dollar chip mark. 1.1 million in total prize money at stake. Who's going to take the title? Phil, Phil Gordon going passes. away. Now it's around to Chris Moneymaker. He's on the button here up against the blinds, picked up a nice hand, King Jack. Oh, Very solid. Sweet. He yeah. just calls, though. Calls he mixes up his now. game. He's just going to call it this time. Now Masood looking at a 7-4 of diamonds out of the small blind. It's kind of a creative little hand. I call. And he's going to call. He is going to play around to Scott. He says, okay. He says, give us a flop. Scott's got king six of hearts. Three-way action out of four players. And look at this flop. It's ace, three, deuce, all spades. Masood checks. Scott checks, moneymaker checks. So everybody checks. Here we go to 4th Street. Queen of Clubs. Masood checks. 40. And look at this. Scott betting with nothing here, folks. King six off suit. He's betting 40,000, though. A newfound respect for him. Now, moneymaker, who's got the king and the jack, has the better hand. Well, it's very tough to call when an opponent bets in front of you with that board. Moneymaker lays it down as does Masood. And Scott Wilson picks up that pot with a very unique bet on 4th Street there. He had absolute zip and pip. Just the imagination of a good gambler. And he needed that. Action goes around to Masood. Very strong king, 10 of clubs. 60. 60,000 he bets. Pushes it into Scott Wilson, who's got Queen 9 this time off suit. Ops to fold. Round to the chip leader, Phil Gordon, with King 3 of diamonds. Four handed, you got to open up the game just a little bit more. Here goes Phil. 180,000 he's betting here with King 3 of diamonds out of position. Chris Moneymaker quickly folds, it's back around to Masood. Masood's calling him. He's going to test him. Well, here we go. A clash between our chip leaders, Phil Gordon and Masood Shojay. Phil Gordon changing gears once again. Let's see if it pays off. Here comes a flop. The flop is 9-7-6. Gordon quickly checks it. 
And Masood checks right behind him with a 10 high straight draw. Here's the turn. Now the Queen of Clubs comes on the turn. Well, it gives a flush draw to Masood. But in the meantime, here comes Phil Gordon. Putting the pedal to the metal here. Remember, Phil has a king. Three offsuit has nothing. He's going to bet 240,000 here. And Masood has four clubs. Straight draws everywhere. Yes, he does. Tremendous outs. I call. So he's going to call here and gamble. And Gordon is sickened by this. Did not want to hear that word call. I guess it's better than raise, but. River card's going to come up. We got a whopper of a pot. Yes, we do. Masood needs the fantasy card. Will he get it? Last card is another queen. Well, the board pairs queens. Helps neither player. And it's up to Phil Gordon. I'm all in. He's all in. The only way he can win this pot is to bet, and he's done so. And that is a high stakes no. professional move, and it pays what off. A play right there. He shows him the king three, shows him the bluff. Masood stares at it. He knows he had the best hand. He thought he was on a draw. He actually had the best hand and the best draw. Oh. What bold, aggressive play by Phil Gordon to pick up that pot. You got to give a lot of respect for Phil Gordon to make that kind of bet at the end. All or nothing kind of player. Great outcome for him. Well, had Masood had some kind of hand and called him at the river there, Phil Gordon would now be on the respirator. As it is, he's the booming chip leader. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the World Poker Tour. My trap worked. He's only got four outs. This guy's going home. Come on, nine. Sometimes making the right move isn't enough, but there's always another hand. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour at Bay 101 in Northern California. First-time tournament player Susie Kim was just picked off by the professional Phil Gordon. With over a million on the line and one bounty remaining, target practice is on at the shooting star. Phil Gordon in total command now, Vance. He now has over a million and a half dollars worth of chips. Masood in second place with 420,000. Scott with about 270. And Chris Moneymaker on the short stack right now with about 210,000. Action is on Moneymaker. He looks down at two nines here, Vince. Come on. Picks up all his money and puts it in the middle. That's what to do with those mid pairs. No game playing around to Masood. He's got queen ten of clubs this time. And I think he's steaming a little bit from that last pot. He knows that he played that hand a little bit different. He would have won it instead of lost it. Will he play this time? Well, he opts to fold. Throws unlucky clubs away. Now here comes Scott. Now Scott has picked up the speed limit. He's got two fives here. Well, he's got a few more chips than Moneymaker. Moneymaker being a short stack player. Well, I can tell you, if he plays these two fives, he will be speeding. He'll have about 20 highway patrolmen right behind him going down the highway. I'll call you. And he's going to call gonna it. He's going to gamble here. He's going to call it. Still quickly going out. Nines, baby. You got it. Well, a marginal call in my mind by him. Oh, no. A pair of fives. Let's play a five. Funny, an ace queen or something. You figure your opponent's got to have at least two over cards. Turns out his opponent has an over pair. And now he's a big underdog here. So here we go. Here comes the flop. It's two nines for Moneymaker, two fives for Scott. Flop is queen jack eight with two spades. Does not help the man from Costa Rica. Well, it makes Masood sick because he'd have flopped two queens. Sure, here's the turn. It's a six. Six of spades. Now, this gives Scott a flush draw. Yeah, it does. I've got some fans in here, don't I? 
So he can win this pot with a spade or a five. Otherwise, he's going to be our fourth place finisher. Scott hanging in there by a toenail. Can he get lucky on the river? Oh, it's a queen. The so moneymaker doubles up here. Well, Scott Wilson has gone all in, but he'll have a little amount of money left. He won't have much left. He is on the morphine drip right now, Scott Wilson. Chris Moneymaker making the money right there. Mr. Moneymaker with some chips. Not enough, baby. One more time. One more time. And right now, Phil Gordon is the monster chip leader. He is truly pushing these guys around right now. He takes a peek at a 10-7 of spades. He folds. And look at this. Chris Moneymaker's picked up two queens on the button. Oh, two ladies, the Hilton sisters. Beautiful cards. How is he going to play it? He just limps in, Ben. He slow he plays it. Calls. And it's right. Trying to get crafty with his two queens. Let's see if it works for him. Call. Call. Well, he's going to have Masood stick around with 6-4 off suit. Scott says, give us a flop. Now, Scott had queen jack of hearts and just opts to see a free flop here. And the flop is jack 9-5. Check. So Masood Check. checks. Checks. Potential disaster for Scott. 30. 30, 30, 30 Scott's hit the top pair, but of course we know Chris has slow played his ladies. Come on. Well, Chris is going all in. Over the top, yeah. all in bet. Masood quickly going out. And Scott's going to call it. Scott thinks he has the best hand with two jacks. Yeah, you got to think that. It's a queen kicker, but he's not going to like it. Because to win this pot, he's going to have to catch a jack. Nice play, Chris. Very nice. Uh, he respects the play. He says, nice play. You got to well, tip your hat for something like that. There's no way you could put him on aces, kings, or queens by limping in in that spot. It was the crafty play of Moneymaker that's got him in the cookie jar here. Can Scott outdraw him at this point? Here we go with our turn. Well, there's a king. So what that means now is a 10 comes off. We'll give them a split. Otherwise, Scott Wilson will be our fourth place finisher here at the Bay 101. He can catch a jack to win it. He needs a 10 to tie it. Here comes the river, Mike. It's a deuce. It's a deuce. He doesn't do it. No, he doesn't. So Scott Wilson from Canada will be our fourth place finisher. So Vince, these guys have put the Zamboni machine on him today. Well, he's got to be happy with himself. A tremendous tournament for this young man. 33 years old, fourth place. He just decided last week he was going to play this tournament, and he's going to pick up $79,000 for his poker play. And it's a nice round of applause. Well, Vince, we are down to three. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Back to the World Poker Tour. We are down to three here. The antes and blinds have gone up, Mike. Yes, they have. We're now playing with a $5,000 ante. Blinds are 20 and 40,000. And as we start three-handed play, Phil Gordon in commanding position here. Here we go. Action's on Masood. King six. Title at stake. Masood throws a hand quickly away. On Phil Gordon. He's got 10-9 off suit. He's in the small blind. Looks like he's getting out some shells to fire here. Yes, he is going to fire it. He bets about 165,000 here. Oh, this is going to be fun. Right into Chris Moneymaker, who's only got a queen six offsuit. Now we see that Chris has the better hand. But when your opponent bets 165,000 and you're looking at queen six offsuit, you can't call. He lays it down. Power poker being demonstrated by the chip leader, Phil Gordon, right now. Phil Gordon in full gear. All he has to do is breathe on these pots and he can take them right now. He is truly the poker bully, taking control. And there's a big title at stake here. Action's on Masood. Yes, it is. And this time he's got a semi-week 10-6 of diamonds. I'm all in. 10-6 of diamonds. He goes all in. 
Not much of a hand, but Phil quickly calling with ace seven off suit. Unless I have aces, I'm folding. Well, he doesn't have the aces, but he does have the two jacks. He's got to love this in a three handed game. He's got the jacks. I got a question. If we both go out on this hand? The question is this. When the next player goes out, if they were to go out on the same hand, who would get the most money? It would be Moneymaker would get second place. Well, he tournament director Matt Savage explaining the answer to Moneymaker's question. What happens if we both go all in and we go out on this hand? The answer is we're going to start the pot with our finishing. Who cares, he says. I'm going all That's in. That's right. He's done it. <laughs> wow. Oh, what a battle we got here. It was all in by Masood. Call by Phil Gordon and now all in by Chris Moneymaker. Bring in all the 230s, please. He says, how much is in the pot? Well, he's only got the A7. Well, Phil Gordon is a math wizard. What he's trying to figure out now is what the pot odds are. That is a big play, big boy. Am I justified in calling another few hundred thousand here? He has been trapped in the middle with A7, off suit. Moneymaker with a quality hand, pair of jacks. But you know what? Mathematically, it may be correct to make this call and take a shot at knocking both of these players out. And he gets oh. the big man from the table. It's going to be tough for both players to be two jacks. That was what was going through Moneymaker's head. I think he made a great decision here. Waitress, please. Cocktails. <laughs> and now Phil Gordon. His face with a decision himself. Oh here. boy. We're talking about a $360,000 first more. prize, 200 for the second place, and 103 for third place. Huge difference. But to a guy like Phil Gordon, where money's no object, it's the title he's after. He wants to redeem himself from his previous performance on the World Poker Tour. Oh, you're putting me in a real bad spot here. He's playing against a major champion, Chris Moneymaker, who won a major last year. He's here, he's back in a big way. He'd love to triple up here. You see the pressure that Phil Gordon is under here. That's exactly 225,000 more to call. 930,000 in the pot right now. You know, poker players usually play the people for no limit. High stakes poker, but at times you have to be very mathematical. I call. He calls. And he's gonna call this. He's doing it. He's gonna make it a horse race well, three ways. It. So right now, we have Moneymaker with two jacks, Masood with 10 six of diamonds, Phil Gordon with a seven off suit. Who's gonna get lucky? If Phil Gordon does, this tournament is history and he's our champion. Ace, baby, ace me. If Moneymaker's jacks can hold up, he would triple up. He's right in contention for first place. Five cards to come, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go with our flop. No. Ace. Phil Gordon's done it so far. He shoots his arms up. He's paired the aces on the flop. He is the leader right now. Oh, horrible flop for Moneymaker. And that's given peace to Masood. He's got the tens. Vince, this has never happened before in the World Poker Tour. Here's the turn. It's an eight of diamonds. Well, it's an eight. So what that means is Chris Moneymaker needs a jack. Masood needs a ten. Otherwise, this tournament is history. Okay, we got the river card to come, the cash card, the fantasy card. Can Phil Gordon hold him off? It's a five! Yes, he does! He did it! A five comes up. Phil Gordon is our champion. He gambled the hand, it paid mm -hmm. off. He gives yeah. Moneymaker a hug. Shakes for two's hand. Both of you played absolutely fantastic all day. Well, he tells them they played fantastic. In the meantime, he gets the cash, the title, and the entry into the WPT Championship. Phil Gordon's going to be our champion. He's going to take home 360,000. Chris Moneymaker coming in second place, picking up 200,000. And then, of course, Masood with 103,000. Incredible drama right here at the Bay 101 on the World Poker Tour. to our awards presentation here at the Shooting Star Bay 101 tournament. Show us the money. <laughs> and 
every venue presents money in a unique way. Now look at these guys coming out with the big cash. And I'll tell you something, Mike, now, if, if you ever went to poker hell, these are the guys you have to confess your bad poker plays hey. to. Oh, look at that. Over 1.1 million. The big cash on the table. This is fun. And now our custom on the World Poker Tour is to toast our champion with Anheuser World Select, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. for the champion of the Shooting Star Tournament at the Bay 101, Phil Gordon. <laughs> for Vince Van Patten, Shauna Hyatt, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, may all your cards be live and your pups be monsters. <laughs>